January 27th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Matthew chapter 27 from the New Testament. When it was early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people plotted against Jesus to execute him. They tied him up, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. Now when Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus had been condemned, he regretted what he had done, and returned the thirty silver coins to the chief priest and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? You take care of it yourself. So Judas threw the silver coins into the temple and left. Then he went out and hanged himself. The chief priest took the silver and said, It is not lawful to put this into the temple treasury, since it is blood money. After consulting together, they bought the potter's field with it, as a burial place for foreigners. For this reason that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. They took the silver coins, the price of the one whose price had been set by the people of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord commanded me. Then Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priest and the elders, he did not respond. Then Pilate said to him, Don't you hear how many charges they are bringing against you? But he did not answer even one accusation, so that the governor was quite amazed. During the feast, the governor was accustomed to release one prisoner to the crowd, whomever they wanted. At that time, they had in custody a notorious prisoner named Jesus Barabbas. So after they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Christ? For he knew that they had handed him over because of envy. As he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent a message to him. Have nothing to do with that innocent man. I have suffered greatly as a result of a dream about him today. But the chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor asked them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Christ? They all said, Crucify him. He asked, Why? What wrong has he done? But they shouted more insistently, Crucify him. When Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but that instead a riot was starting, he took some water, washed his hands before the crowd, and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. You take care of it yourselves. In reply, all the people said, let his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas for them. But after he had Jesus flocked, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the governor's residence and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe around him. And after braiding a crown of thorns, they put it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and kneeling down before him, they mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the staff and struck him repeatedly on the head. When they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they found a man from Cyrene named Simon, whom they forced to carry his cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull and offered Jesus wine mixed with gall to drink. But after tasting it, he would not drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided his clothes by throwing dice. Then they sat down and kept guard over him there. Above his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two outlaws were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by defamed him, shaking their heads, and saying, You who can destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. 
If you are God's son, come down from the cross. In the same way, even the chief priests, together with the experts in the law and elders, were mocking him. He saved others, but he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. If he comes down now from the cross, we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God, if he wants to, deliver him now, because he said, I am God's son. The robbers who were crucified with him also spoke abusively to him. Now from noon until three, darkness came over all the land. At about three o'clock, Jesus shouted with a loud voice, Alay, Alay lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and gave up his spirit. Just then the temple curtain was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split apart and the tombs were opened and the bodies of many saints who had died were raised. They came out of the tombs after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. Now when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were extremely terrified and said, Truly this one was God's son. Many women who had followed Jesus from Galilee and given him support were also there, watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. Now when it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut in the rock. Then he rolled a great stone across the entrance of the tomb and went away. Now Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. The next day, which is after the day of preparation, the chief priest and the Pharisees assembled before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that while that deceiver was still alive, he said, After three days I will rise again. So give orders to secure the tomb until the third day. Otherwise his disciples may come and steal his body and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead and the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, Take a guard of soldiers, go, and make it as secure as you can. So they went with the soldiers of the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. God, I, I ask you today to help us remember your, your sacrifice of your son. For us. I read accounts of the crucifixion and all that it entails from the flogging that isn't anything like what we can even understand with long strips of leather and bone and metal to to break apart the skin and to expose bones and internal organs. And somehow your son made it through that and had to walk the streets among people who, who were there to celebrate the Passover, to celebrate you removing them from the slavery that their ancestors dealt with. And yet here's your son walking in the streets and they're spitting on him and laughing at him and making fun of him. The same people that you had saved in the past. And then the horrible, excruciating hours and hours of a crucifixion. Where even he refused possibly what was poison mixed with the wine. To shorten his life and not have to deal with all the pain. 
because he knew why he was there. He knew in order to be this ultimate sacrifice for our sins, for my sins, that his blood had to be shed and he had to go through all of that for us. And when I read about the crucifixion, it makes it really hard to be a human, to be a broken human, to be a sinful human, to know that all the sins that have been committed in this entire world in the past and going on right now and will be committed in the future were why your son had to die. And it makes it really hard. Because I know that there's nothing I can do. <laughs> no works I can do to make up for any of that. At all. All I can do is what you ask us to do, which is accept Jesus Christ, your son, as my Lord and Savior. Ask for forgiveness of my sins. Understand the rest of the story. Where he didn't just die and that was the end, but that he rose to go spend eternity in heaven with you. And that somehow your love is so big for us that you tell me that that's all I need to do. That your grace will save me. That your grace will allow for the forgiveness of all my sins. That I will be white as snow. And in our world of fairness, God, and, and justice, I have to tell you that doesn't make sense to us. Because it really feels like you're getting the short end of that stick. <laughs> And we keep thinking we need to do something more. We need to work harder or go to church more. Read your, Bible, read your word in the Bible more. But we have it backwards. See, if we have a relationship with your son, Jesus. And we allow that love to live in our hearts. Then automatically. We want to do those other things. Not to do those other things to be saved and to be forgiven. But to just ask that you come into our lives and live there. And then allow our lives to be a reflection of you. Then we will want to go do the works. Not to save ourselves, but to help others. Doing works to get salvation or doing works to get forgiveness makes it all about us. And it's not all about us. It's all about you. And once we get that, that it's all about you and we submit to that and we are humble about that and we lay our life before your feet. Then we fulfill the commandments that your son talked about in the New Testament. That if we love you first, with our heart and our soul and our mind and our everyday actions, then of course we're going to love our neighbors as ourselves. We're going to be able to go out and take care of people and want to be in your word daily and fall more and more in love with you. So as hard as it is to hear, you give up your son and give up your son in such a humiliating and painful way. I do know that you did it because you love me. And again, you love me in a way that I can't even comprehend. But I'm so thankful for that blessing. I'm thankful that you chose me, God, to be one of your children. I'm thankful for my new heart, thankful for my new life. And I'm thankful that I get to wake up every morning and work on the fact that it's not about me, that it's about you. And I don't always get it right, more often than not. But to have an opportunity to be a reflection of you, God. 
It's just amazing. God, thank you. I love you so much. In your son's name we pray. Amen.